All right, so after a long night of scrubbing out the uh, upper oil pan, the oil pump, and the rear main seal housing, getting rid of it, all that uh, old silicone gasket, or at least as much of it as we could, uh, we're ready to go ahead and put the uh, drift motion high RPM uh, oil pump back on. Now this oil pump from drift motion is a modified oil pump meant for uh, high RPM motors or for NAT motors, which is what this one is. So yeah, drift motion, I know Titan also makes a modified oil pump. Titan or Powerhouse Racing, I'm not sure which one. Those are usually just GTE pumps that they modify, open up the bores a little bit. Uh, kind of the same stuff that happened with this one. We do plan on revving this thing out to around 9,000 RPM, uh, maybe even up to 10,000 RPM with the new rotating assembly once we get that. Um, so that's one reason why we went with this pump itself. But yeah, I'm gonna throw a bead of silicone on there and we'll slap this pump on. But before we do that, I'm gonna grab a beer and our nice Mishimoto uh, koozie. Of course, Mishimoto is a sponsor of the car. So shout out to Mishimoto for sponsoring the car. Let's get this bead laid. Actually, before we get the oil pump on, we need to put our O-rings in on our, our, uh, on our block. Uh, I've already went in and wiped down the mating surfaces to make sure we have a, a nice, clean, dry mating surface. So if you haven't done that at this point, you want to make sure that you wipe that down. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to use OEM Toyota uh, O-rings for this. I got these, I believe, from, yeah, from Rad Industries. Oh, dang it, Rad, no stickers. I guess when this is all you order, it doesn't justify stickers. Does anyone else get disappointed when products don't come with stickers? Um, if so, if that's you, comment down below. Um, I've definitely turned into one of those guys. I do enjoy getting the stickers. I throw them on the fridge or on the toolbox, as I'm sure you guys have seen. I don't put a whole lot on the car, uh, with the exception of, of course, the Mishimoto decals, because I'm obligated to have that on there. And uh, I do, uh, since I've run a lot of Chase Bays and Real Street stuff, and since those companies have been huge in supporting this build, uh, I definitely want to show them off. So I put those stickers on the car as well. But uh, other than that, most stickers just end up on the toolbox and on the fridge. So, got our OEM. O rings in. Now we are going to lay that bead of silicone on our oil pump. Oops, oops. That came out way faster than I expected it to. Normally these things don't spew out like that. Ah. Definitely no shortage of uh, silicone on that. So let's go ahead and get that onto it. I'm a little concerned that I might have spilled some. I just trust the process, right? I'm just gonna hand sight these and give the silicone a little bit of time to cure before I torque it down all the way. Once it cures, 
then I hit it with the proper torque specs. So while I'm waiting on to cure, I'm gonna go look up what those torque specs are. So yeah, let's go do that next. Alright, same thing as before. A little bit of silicone on there. This does have a lining pins on it, so I'm not 100% concerned about misalignment on it. I'm just going to get it on those aligning pins. Or at least try to. This is a hundred times easier with the engine off of the steam. set these in here just to keep the housing in place. I'm going to flip it over and make sure everything is where it should be. Make sure there's no spring sticking out. Some weird place that it shouldn't be sticking out. Now to check for that spring. Spring is still in place. Yeah, I'm gonna call that a success. All right, so quick update. Uh, crank, rods, pistons, bearings, all that shit's already in. Uh, we've got the rear main seal and the oil pump on. The next up, we're just gonna go ahead and throw the oil pan, or at least the upper oil pan, back on, onto the engine. And uh, that's probably where we're gonna call it for, the, for this video. Uh, that'll give us uh, essentially a short block. Um, we could go ahead and throw the head back on there too, since it's already assembled. Uh, so I don't know, maybe we'll do that. Uh, but either way, this is probably gonna be like the last step for this video, so enjoy it. All right, just like everything else, we uh, gonna throw a bead of silicone on this. Already wiped down my surfaces. I'm actually gonna give it one more little wipe down because I see some ATF still floating around through there. I think I might be running out of silicone already. I don't know if I use too much or that's a good sign. But either way, we got it all the way done.
Boom. Right, let's drop these bad boys in there. Another big one's going in the back. And just like with all the other ones so far, I'm gonna let these uh let the silicone cure before I actually tighten these down to to the torque spec. There's our uh, our short block assembly. Everything from the uh, the block down has been assembled, minus the lower oil pan. And let's be honest, that's not that much. That's just putting in the uh, the oil pickup tube, the baffle, and the pan itself. So I'm pretty happy we managed to get through this. It took a couple days, mostly because I was being lazy and didn't have all the stuff I needed in order to knock this out in one sitting. But all in all, reassembling it to this point was probably, you know, three hours worth of work, if that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with this one. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. So hold up. All right, so you might have noticed in the last clip that I forgot to add one little thing. That was this little O-ring that goes right here uh, where the pickup tube comes into the block. So I had to pull everything back off and I'm glad I did because I wasn't too confident on the seal that the Ultra Gray had. Uh, not saying it wouldn't have worked by any means. Uh, it's just personal preference. I just wasn't comfortable with the way that thing sealed. Um, and it could be completely due to the fact that I may not have done the cure process the right way. But I went ahead and pulled everything back off, including the oil pump and the rear main seal. Cleaned it all back off again. Put those back on, and now we're gonna put the upper oil pan back on. Okay, so this time we're gonna be using the Ultra Black from Permatex. All right, well, we're gonna let this sit and cure for a little bit. We got everything down hand tight, just enough to get a little bit of a squeeze coming out uh, from in between the two pieces of metal. Uh, the instructions say, give it about an hour to cure. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back and we're gonna torque everything to spec. So, see you guys in an hour. All right guys, so I went ahead and torqued down everything off camera. Um, and that's really just because I don't want to give torque specs and then somebody else tries it and they mess up their engine because it's not the right torque spec for their engine or just because I got the torque specs wrong and then something happens to their engine. I don't want to be liable for it. And uh, at the same time, I don't want to give you guys bad information. So what I will say is I went off of just like Google, uh, the Hue 360 um, 2JZ manual online. And I went based off of those torque specs for everything that was a factory bolt. And then for the ARP stuff, I went off of the actual ARP website like you should be doing anyway. So here's where we're at right now. So we got the upper oil pan on. We got the uh, baffle and the strainer on. And now we're just going to go ahead and throw on the uh, lower oil pan. So yeah, that's where right now. We're going to throw the lower oil pan on. 
it's nothing interesting so i'm going to go ahead and do that off camera as well that way we can kind of speed up the process of this video so i'll see you guys after that lower oil pan is on all right guys well, that's gonna be it for this video we got the complete short block done everything from rods pistons crank bearings upper and lower oil pan baffle all that stuff uh oil pump front and rear main seals all that's done uh so yeah only thing left is to throw the top end on, which is going to be, of course, the heads, cams, and everything else. Uh, one thing I do want to do, though, is I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the head back apart and just go through it uh, just to be safe. Uh, I got a little bit of time before the uh, next deadline for streetcar takeover. So I'm going to pull those out and go ahead and send this head off to get cleaned out as well. Yep, I know. I should have just sent it when I sent the block, but I didn't, and now I'm paying the price for it. But I'd rather pay the price for it now and have it cleaned out and everything good to go versus paying the price for it on track. So that's where we're at. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like always, like, share, subscribe. Uh, comment below, please. Uh, likes and comments are really what keep the algorithm going. And then uh, stay tuned so you can see what happens uh, when we do this. And right, so we're basically done on this side. We got the rotors, calipers, pads, brake lines, everything put in. Um, still cutting the dust cover on the other side and it's starting to rain so we'll probably just check in once all the rears are done and then we'll kind of just walk through what happened later